Scheduling to minimize lateness and exchange argument. We now discuss a scheduling problem related to the one with which we began the chapter. Despite the similarities in the problem formulation and in the greedy algorithm to solve it, the proof that this algorithm is optimal will require a more sophisticated kind of analysis. The problem. Consider again a situation in which we have a single resource and a set of n requests to use the resources for an interval of time. Assume that the resource is available starting at time s. In contrast to the previous problem, however, each request is now more flexible. Instead of a start time and a finish time, the request i has a deadline di and it requires a contiguous time interval of length di. But it is willing to be scheduled at any time before the deadline. Each accepted request must be assigned an interval of time of length di, and the different request must be assigned non-overlapping intervals. There are many objective functions we might seek to optimize when faced with this situation, and some are computationally much more difficult than others. Here we consider a very natural goal that can be optimized by a greedy algorithm. Suppose that we plan to satisfy each request, but we are allowed to let certain requests run late. Thus, beginning at our overall start time s, we will assign each request i an interval of time of length ti. Let us denote this interval by uh, the pair s of i and uh, f of i with a close interval divided by these two numbers with uh, f of i equals to s of i plus ti. Unlike the previous uh, problem, then the algorithm must actually determine a start time and hence a finish time for each interval. We say that a request i is late if it misses the deadline that is, if f of i is greater than di, the lateness of such a request i is defined to be li equals to f of i minus di. We will say that li equals to 0 if a request i is not late. The goal in our new optimization problem will be to schedule all requests using non-overlapping intervals so as to be the minimize the maximum lateness where L is equal to the maxima of Li, where the maxima is taken among all possible index i. And uh, this problem arises naturally when scheduling jobs that need to use a single machine, and so we will refer to our requests as jobs. Uh, the figure 4.5 uh, shows a sample instance of this problem consisting of uh, three jobs. The first has length t1 equals to 1 and the deadline d1 equals to 2. The second has t2 equals to 2 and the d2 equals to 4. And the third has t3 equals to 3 and the d3 equals to 6. It is not hard to check that scheduling the jobs in the order 1 to 3 incurs a maximum lateness of 0. Designing the algorithm. What would a greedy algorithm for this problem look like. There are several natural greedy approaches in which we look at the data ti di pair about the jobs and use this to order them according to some simple rule. One approach would be to schedule the jobs in order of increasing length ti so as to get the short jobs out of the way quickly. This immediately looks too simplistic, since it completely ignores the deadlines of the jobs. And indeed, consider a two-job instance where the first job has t1 equals to 1 and the d1 equals to 100, where the second job has t2 equals to 10 and d2 equals to 10. Then, the second job has to be started right away if we want to achieve lateness l equals to 0 and uh, Scheduling the second job first is indeed the optimal solution. The previous example suggests that we should be concerned about jobs whose available slack time di minus ti is very small. There are 
the ones that need to be started with minimal delay. So a more general, a more natural greedy algorithm would be to store the drops in order of increasing slack di minus ti. Unfortunately, this greedy rule fails as well. Consider a two-job instance where the first job has t1 equals to 1 and the d1 equals to 2, while the second job has t2 equals to 10 and the d2 equals to 10. Starting by increasing slack, we would place the second job first in the schedule, and the first job would incur a lateness of 9. It finishes at time 11, 9 units beyond its deadline. On the other hand, if we schedule the first job first, then it finishes on time and the second job incurs a lateness of only one. There is, however, an equally basic greedy algorithm that always produces an optimal solution. We simply sort the jobs in increasing order of their deadlines di and schedule them in this order. This rule is often called the earliest deadline first. There is an intuitive basis to this rule. We should make sure that jobs with earlier deadlines get completed earlier. At the same time, it's a little hard to believe that this algorithm always produces optimal solutions, specifically because it never looks at the length of the jobs. Earlier, we were skeptical of the approach that sorted the balance on the grounds that it threw away half the input data, i.e. the deadlines, but now we are considering a solution that throws away the other half of the data. Nevertheless, earliest deadline first does produce optimal solutions, and we will now prove this. First, we specify some notation that will be useful in talking about the algorithm. By renaming the jobs if necessary, we can assume that the jobs are labeled in the order of their deadlines. That is, we have d1 less than equals to d2 and so on, which is less than equals to dn. We will simply schedule all jobs in this order. Again, let s be the start time for all jobs. Job 1 will start at time s equals to s of 1 and end at time f of 1 equals to s of 1 plus t1. Job 2 will start at time s of 2 equals to f of 1 and end at time f of 2 equals to s of 2 plus t2 and so forth. We will use f to denote the finishing time of the last scheduled job. We write this algorithm here. Order the jobs in order of their deadlines. Assume for simplicity of notation that d1 is less than equals to d2, which is less than equals to dn. Initially, set f equals to s. Consider the jobs i equals to 1 to 3 until n. In this order, assign job i to the time interval from s of i equals to f to f of i equals to f plus ti, and let f equals to f plus ti, and return the set of scheduled intervals, uh, the closed interval between s of i and f of i, for i equals to 1, 2, 3, until n. Analyzing the algorithm. To reason about the optimality of the algorithm, we first observe that the schedule it produces has no gaps. Times when the machine is not working yet, there are jobs left. The time that passes during a gap will be called idle time. There is work to be done, yet for some reason the machine is sitting idle. Not only does the schedule I produced by our algorithm have no idle time, it is also very easy to see that there is an optimal schedule with this property. We do not write down a proof for this. 4.7, there is an optimal schedule with no idle time. Now, how can we prove that our schedule A is optimal? That is, its maximum lateness L is as small as possible. As in previous analysis, 
we will start by considering an optimal schedule O. Our plan here is to gradually modify O, preserving its optimality at each step, but eventually transforming it into a schedule that is identical to the schedule A found by the greedy algorithm. We refer to this type of analysis as an exchange argument, and we will see that it is a powerful way to think about the greedy algorithm in general. We first, we first try characterizing, characterizing schedules, schedules in the following, in the following way. way. We, we say, say that, that a schedule A prime has an inversion, inversion of uh, if a job I with deadline DI is scheduled before another job J with the earlier deadline DJ, which is less than DI. Notice that by definition, the schedule A produced by our algorithm has no inversions. If uh, there are jobs with uh, identical deadlines, then there can be many different schedules with no inversions. However, we can show that all these schedules have the same maximum lateness L. 4.8 All schedules with no inversions and no idle time have the same maximum lateness. Proof If uh, two different schedules have neither inversions nor idle time, then they might not produce exactly the same order of jobs, but they can only differ in the order in which jobs with identical deadlines are scheduled. Consider such a deadline D. In both schedules, the jobs with deadline D are all scheduled consecutively. After all jobs with earlier deadlines and before all jobs with later deadlines, among the jobs with a deadline D, the last one has the greatest lateness, and uh, this lateness does not depend on the order of the jobs. The main step in showing the optimality of our algorithm is to establish that there is an optimal schedule that has no inversions and no idle time. To do this, we will start with any optimal schedule having no idle time. We will then convert it into a schedule with no inversions without increasing its maximum lateness. Thus, the resulting scheduling after this conversion will be optimal as well. 4.9 There is an optimal schedule that has no inversions and no idle time. Proof by 4.7 There is an optimal schedule O with no idle time. The proof We'll consider a sequence of statements. The first of these is simple to establish. A. If O has an inversion, then there is a pair of jobs I and J such that J is scheduled immediately after I and has DJ which is less than DI. Indeed, consider an inversion in which a job A is scheduled some time before a job B, and DA is greater than DB. If we advance in the scheduled order of jobs from A to B, one at a time, there has to come a point at which the deadline we see decreases for the first time. This corresponds to a pair of consecutive jobs that form an inversion. Now suppose O has at least one inversion, and uh, by A, let I and J be a pair of inverted uh, requests that are consecutive in the scheduled order. We will decrease the number of inversions in O by swapping the requests I and J in the schedule O. The pair IJ formed an inversion in O. This inversion is eliminated by the swap and no new inversions are created. Thus, we have B. After swapping I and J, we get a schedule with one less inversion. The hardest part of this proof is to argue that the inverted schedule is also optimal. See, the new swapped schedule has a maximum lateness no larger than that of O. It is clear that if we can Proof C, then we are done. The initial schedule O can have at most n choose two inversions if all pairs are inverted, and hence after at most n choose two swaps, we get an optimal schedule with no inversions. 
So we now conclude by proving C, showing that by swapping a pair of consecutive inverted drops, we do not increase the maximum lateness L of the schedule. Proof of C. We invent some notation to describe the, the schedule O. Assume that each request R is scheduled for the time interval, the closed interval between S of R and F of R, and has lateness L R prime. That capital L prime equals to the maxima of L R prime, where the L is little and the R is chosen among possible R, denote the maxima lateness of this schedule. Let O bar denote the swapped schedule. We will use S bar of R, F bar of R, L R bar, and the capital L bar to denote the corresponding quantities in the swapped schedule. Now recall our two adjacent inverted drops I and J. The situation is roughly as pictured in the following figure. The finishing time of drop J before the swap is exactly equal to the finishing time of I after the swap. Thus, all jobs other than jobs I and J finish at the same time in the two schedules. Moreover, job J will get finished earlier in the new schedule, and hence the swap does not increase the lateness of job J. Thus, the only thing to worry about is job I. Its lateness may have been increased. And what if this actually raises the maximum lateness of the whole schedule? After the swap, job I finishes at time F of J. When job J was finished in the schedule O, if job I is late in this new schedule, its lateness is L I bar, which is equal to F bar of I minus DI, which is equal to F of J minus DI. But the crucial point is that I cannot be more late in the schedule O bar than J was in the schedule O. Specifically, our assumption di which is greater than dj implies that li bar which is equals to f of j minus di which is less than f of j minus dj which is equals to lj prime since uh, the lateness of uh, the schedule o was l prime capital l prime which is greater than equals to lj prime which is greater than li bar this shows that the swap does not increase the maximum lateness of the schedule. The optimality of our greedy algorithm now follows immediately. 4.10 The schedule A produced by the greedy algorithm has optimal maximum lateness L. Proof Statement 4.9 Proof that an optimal schedule with no inversions exists. Now by 4.8, all schedules with no inversions have the same maximum lateness, and so the schedule obtained by the greedy algorithm is optimal. Extensions. There are many possible generalizations of this scheduling problem. For example, we assume that all jobs were available to start at the common start time S. A natural but harder version of this problem would contain requests I that, in addition to the deadline di and the requested time ti, would also have an earliest possible starting time ri. This earliest possible starting time is usually referred to as the release time. Problems with release times arise naturally in scheduling problems where requests can take the form. Can I reserve the room for a two-hour lecture? sometime between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. are proof that the greedy algorithm finds an optimal solution, relied crucially on the fact that all jobs were available at the common start time S. Do you see where? Unfortunately, as we will see later in the book, in Chapter 8, this more general version of the problem is much more difficult to solve optimally.